Welcome to chapter 2, section 1. And chapter 2 is going to be all about Ruby, all about the, the actual programming language. Uh, we're going to take a break from Ruby on Rails for a bit and just learn a little bit of Ruby itself. Uh, like I said in the, in the past chapter, uh, you don't need to have a solid foundation in Ruby to start learning Ruby on Rails. Uh, and actually, if you don't know any up to this point, that's absolutely fine. I'm gonna, just going to show you in Chapter 2 the basics of Ruby and, and just what you need to know in order to, to build a web application using Rails. So a little bit of history on Ruby. Uh, it was created by a Japanese man named Yukihiro Matsumoto and he's better known as Mats, M-A-T-Z, and he created Ruby in 1993 and it wasn't released until it was released to the public in 1995 um, and many developers say that Ruby is one of the most expressive and concise programming languages um, Matt's he had a different approach when he created Ruby than most um, programming language developers he it was created for productivity um, and simplicity and he created it using the having the the programmer in mind. It was created for programmers by programmers. So, and elim he eliminated a lot of the, the, basically the crap work that you have to do when you're building a program. Um, he, what he did was he took the best aspects of all the languages he was using in that time and kind of meshed them all together uh, and called it Ruby. You know, he took uh, certain elements from Java uh, and a lot of elements from Smalltalk and just different languages, uh, different parts from different languages. So some other Ruby facts. Ruby doesn't need to be compiled like many, most other languages like C, C++, Java. Um, usually they would have, you'd have to have an IDE that would run them through a compiler and we would use more resources uh, so Ruby doesn't have to be compiled it's it's just read just how it is how it's written um, so that's a really a really good plus to to Ruby uh, it's relatively easy to learn um, it's it's not it's relatively easy if you look at other programming languages and then look at Ruby it's it's easier um, I don't like to say that it's anything's easy any programming languages are uh, that simple. Um, it definitely does take a lot of work to to learn any kind of programming languages. Um, <clears throat> and Ruby is pure object orientated. Uh, in Ruby, everything is an object, and uh, I mean everything. Numbers, booleans, uh, are all treated as objects. Um, but don't let that fool you. You can. I'll go into this on the next slide actually, but Ruby is a multi-paradigm language, so um, even though it's object oriented it, it also includes other types of paradigms, functional and, and whatever. Um, the syntax is similar to Perl and Python. Uh, if you know any Perl or any Python, then this should be easier for you to learn. Um, and Ruby is used for Obviously, it's used for web applications. That's what this series is about. Ruby on Rails is strictly for web applications, but Ruby itself can also be used for other types of desktop applications, uh, 2D games, and, and some other stuff. It's not as powerful as using something like Java, but um, you can do other things with it. And it's really fun to use. So like I said, Ruby is a multi-paradigm language. Um, it is an object oriented language, but can utilize multiple types of paradigms for, for different problems. Um, Ruby it can also be functional and imperative, um, if you know anything about different kinds of um, programming paradigms. And everything in Ruby is treated as an object. Um, and that's a really important thing to understand when when programming with Ruby. Any object, everything's an object, and objects have methods: um, numbers, strings, booleans, statements, methods, uh, methods of functions, which I'll be using interchangeably. Um, it, it, Ruby likes to define functions as methods. Um, I might say either one, so basically they're the same thing. 
um, in these methods here's an example we have five this is the syntax for to call a, um, a method from an object so the object here is five and the method is times and this particular method will uh, print something out five times or do whatever we want five times um, now here we have a string hello and the function I mean the sorry the method uh, is reverse which will just reverse the spelling of hello um, and here we have the string hello again with the length method which will give us the length of the word so this would be five hello dot length would be the same as five okay let's move on syntax of Ruby uh, as I said earlier it's similar to Perl and Python um, keywords in Ruby signal class and method definition um, and there are there are some pretty um, prominent differences from Ruby and, and other most other languages one of them is that when you declare a method you don't have to use well you can't use uh, curly braces like you would in most other languages instead you use the, the keyword def def for define and then the method name and then all the stuff in between and then at the end you wouldn't have a, a closing curly brace you'd have end the text end so it takes a little bit of getting used to but it's not it's not bad um, another thing is that you don't need to have a semicolon on the end of your statements uh, Ruby uses a line break to, to know that that's the end of the statement um, but you can use semicolons which I do uh, and that's what I would really recommend if if you're working in, in other programming languages as well because uh, it doesn't hurt um, and it's not a lot of work so why not do it um, and the next thing uh, Ruby takes uppercase variables and treats them as constants um, so keep your variables lowercase unless you want it to be a, a value that doesn't change and let's see you get back what you put in in terms of data types um, what that means is if you have say you have 7 divided by 3 and you know that, that the answer to that is 2.3 but you're not going to get that you'll get two uh, because whatever you put in is what you get back and what you put in was an integer two integers so that's what you get back if you want to have a float back then that's what you got to put in you'd have to put 7.0 divided by uh, 3.0 and then you'd get 2.3 so whatever you put in is what you get back um, let's see Ruby keeps all instances all instance variable private to the class um, the dollar sign and the at sign are not thought of as data types but scope resolution so uh, when we declare a variable we don't have any kinda um, symbol or character on the front of it if we do have a dollar sign in front of it a dollar sign yeah that's what's called um, then that usually means that it's a global variable so only global variables would have that let's see let's move on and that looks like that's it so um, in the next video I will be showing you more um, you know actual programming we're going to use a, a, a program called Ruby installer and that'll give us a, a another program called interactive Ruby which is a command line interface that we can run Ruby code in. So um, I'll see you in that video.